While India continues to be in the grasp of a devastating second wave, the World Health Organization said that the COVID variant first identified in India last year is being classified as a variant of global concern. The WHO says that the preliminary studies show that it spread more easily. WHO chief scientist Soumya Swaminathan said that studies are still on their way to examine variants' transmissibility, the severity of disease it caused, and the response of antibodies in people who have been vaccinated. Swaminathan also warned that chances of such dangerous variants emerging is more in the coming days. The one that was first identified in India, the B1617, is likely to be a variant of concern because it has some mutations which increase transmission and which also potentially could make them resistant to antibodies that are generated uh, by vaccination or by natural infection. We, we have the committee looking at those criteria very soon to determine if it's a variant of concern, but the epidemiological uh, features that we see in India today do indicate that it's extremely ra rapidly uh, spreading variant. The B1617 variant was first identified in India in December 2020, although an earlier version was also spotted in October in the same year. The variant has already spread to at least 17 countries and many countries have moved to cut or restrict movement from India. The B1617 is the fourth variant to be designated as being of global concern and requiring heightened analysis. The others are those first detected in Britain, South Africa and Brazil. The World Health Organization also said that the variant strain is not the only reason behind the massive surge. The organization blamed large gatherings, huge social mixing and relaxation of public health and social measures. We are still in a perilous situation. The spread of variants, increased social mixing, the relaxation of public health and social measures, and inequitable vaccination are all driving transmission. Yes, vaccines are reducing severe disease and deaths in countries that are fortunate enough to have them in sufficient quantities. And early results suggest that vaccines might also drive down transmission. Many experts say that the world will have to learn to live with this virus. When the pandemic began, there was hope that the world will achieve herd immunity. But over a year later, the virus has left India and South America devastated, where the second wave continues to surge. It is not just the new, more contagious variants. Vaccinations are happening too slowly for herd immunity to be within reach anytime soon. Experts believe if the virus continues to run rampant through much of the world, it would become an endemic, an ever-present threat. Different nations have different answers to deal with the threat. In Australia, on April 24, Perth entered a snap three-day lockdown when two people tested positive. Countries like Australia, Bhutan and New Zealand have had a zero tolerance approach and the response to outbreaks have been swift. Some say this cannot be sustained indefinitely. But in countries like India and United States, communities and services remain open even during phases of high transmission. So where do we strike a balance? As a community, what is the acceptable level of risk? Will the world reach a level where risks of COVID-19 are compared with that of flu or influenza? The risk equation in this situation, which is the way people balance risks from an infection against problems caused by harsh restrictions, has changed for many. A year ago, the fear of an unknown virus drove governments to implement harsh social restrictions. In India, when a complete lockdown was first announced, the country had just above 500 cases in total. And now, with over 400,000 cases being reported in a single day, experts believe people have begun to factor the risk in their daily lives. The bar for imposing social restrictions stands higher now, but the exact position of that is still unknown. It could come down again if new variants pose a threat or if the existing variants threaten gains from vaccination. And that is for each nation to decide. But keeping in mind the aim to achieve global herd immunity and to beat the virus.